Hi, Connie here. During my youth, the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union was raging, posing an existential threat of nuclear annihilation. My school had bomb shelter drills, and I had a very real fear of our enemy. I struggled with nightmares over this question. In the face of certain death, would I lie to the enemy about being a Christian? I believed I would stand for Jesus, and I even devised a few childlike final declarations, just in case. Fortunately, that didn't become a reality for me, and the Cold War officially ended in 1991. Today, according to Open Doors World Watch List, around 365 million Christians are currently experiencing high levels of persecution and discrimination for their faith, which is about one in seven Christians worldwide. Yet in many of these countries, the underground church is expanding exponentially. An Open Doors country expert said, I've never seen a clear connection between a growing opposition and a growing church. In Sunday's sermon text, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted unquestioning devotion, and he created both impressive lures and scary threats to get it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tell Nebuchadnezzar that God can rescue them from the king's hand, but if he does not, we won't serve your gods or worship your gold image. When it came time to do or die, their confidence in God was steadfast. We know many accounts where, at great personal cost, people courageously chose to stand firm for God's purposes. Queen Esther, risking her life to save her people, said, If I perish, I perish. The Apostle Paul, when in prison, said, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Martin Luther, when demanded by the Roman Catholic Church to renounce his belief, said, I cannot and will not recant anything, for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, said, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He prayed, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. How can we resist enticements and reject idolatry? First, we must recognize them. In Jeremiah 29, God warned the Jews in Babylon about deceptions. Daniel and his friends knew what true worship was and could thereby distinguish it from false worship of things or people who don't deserve it. God also gave them hope and promise future deliverance. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have his inspired word, the Bible, to teach, guide, and give us hope. Job said, I know my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. We know our Redeemer is Jesus. Only he has the power to deliver us from sin and eternal death. None other is worthy of our worship. Let's save our worship for the one who saves us.